Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is Dr. Asi. Today's topic is chapter 19, which is population ecology. So what is population ecology? So previous chapter, we learned about ecology, basic, basic ecology and subsections of ecology. Population ecology is one of those uh, subsections because ecology is very diverse. So today we are gonna talk about population ecology. So population ecology includes topics like population dynamics, which is basically concepts and principles of population growth, regulation, and other dynamics over the time, uh, analyzing population data, which is required skills, collect, analyze, and interpret population data using statistical and math techniques. Um, and also factors, learn about factors affecting population size. Uh, so we will talk about population, like birth rates, death rates, immigration, immigration, environment factors like resources, availability, habitat quality, and predation. So, um, so they are also listed here, population, ecology, exponential growth, population density, immigration, community, carrying capacity, age structure, and abiotic factors. So let's get started. Um, so this is just a little case study, just um, basically covering how actually is a one species, like in this case, lionfish, which basically um, it innocently could be um, actually grown in one place and it can actually take over and become like invasive species. So, um, so population ecology. Okay, we know population. We know population is second level in ecology after organisms, species, which we learned in last chapter. Population is group of organisms, same in the same organisms. Um, it's a unit of evolution also at the same time. Um, so which uh, they rely on same resources, influenced by same environment factors, and they interact and breed with one another. So that's population, basically, definition. So population ecology is concerned with changes in population size, factors, regulate populations over time. So when we talk about population size, it means number of individuals, their age structures, different ages, or density, number of individuals per unit area, or volume. And then when we talk about population dynamics, so really we're talking about biotic and abiotic factors might be influencing their size, population size, and population growth. So what is population density? Population density basically um, covers individuals of a species per unit area or volume of an habitat. So we know that habitat from the last chapter is the natural home of an organism. So we can study population density. Um, so how do we measure population density? Um, so it's not it's it's not very practical to count one by one every individuals in a population. So ecologists use sampling techniques to estimate population density, um, and then um they they can estimate by specific indicators like bird nests or rodent burrows or not really counting the individual species necessarily. Um, population age structure is next topic, which is there are life tables and survivorship curves here. So age structure of a population is distribution of an individual or individuals in different age groups, which provides insight into the history of population survival, productive success, and how population is related to environmental factors. Like you see in this graph here, the cactus, finches, and then their different ages and a percentage in their population. So there are tables like you see here in the second picture here, which is showing this picture specifically showing US population in 2012 and divided in specific age intervals, 0 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, and and goes on like 90 plus. We can see here number of living 
uh, in this uh, 90 plus is 24,000. And how many dying? And what's the chance of surviving in turbo? So here is a very important um, a topic in under population ecology, which is called survivorship age curves. So we have three types of these curves. They're called type one, type two, type three. Type one, like human, which goes, you can see here, um, and it's steady and then declines with the age. This is type one, human, large mammals. This is also called K like letter K selection. Okay, so this is type one, life table. Uh, type two is the one straight declines from beginning to end. Uh, that's basically like birds, hydra. And type three is actually like, you can see, um, it's not very, it's very high at the beginning, but it's actually very low in the later ages. This is type three. Examples are trees, oyster, lizards. This is also called R selection type three. Okay, so this is this one here, low survivorship. Type one has higher likelihood of survivorship. And type two is in between. Okay, so, um, so that's also tied to the reproductive success which is key to evolutionary success and um, combination of life instead of traits represented trade-offs that balance demands of reproduction and survival. So, and there are different type of life, life history, like opportunistic, take immediate advantage of favorite conditions and typically exhibit type three, which is like trees, right? Equilibrial, life history, which is uh, produce few well cared of springs, typically larger bodies, longer leave and exhibit type one. Type one is the one that actually we see in human and large mammals. This is also called case selection. So population growth models. So we have also population growth models, which uh, population ecologists develop and use so uh, they look like uh, these here. Population growth could be exponential. You can see here, uh, like in this graph, which means expansion of a population in an ideal unlimited environment. Okay, so this is also called J shape, because letter J looks like, like rabbits, uh, which is basically a good example, which have unlimited environment in this case and exponential J shape growth. The other one is, second one is logistic population growth, which is there are a reality of limited environments. This is logistic. So maximum population size uh, is rich here. You can see this level here and levels up and that's also called carrying capacity. Okay, carrying capacity, which growth the rate is zero in this case. So it's there both here, J shape and logistic. Example to J uh, logistic is uh, seals. Um, so what else? Uh, there are also some density dependent factors. So regulation of population growth, right? So which are the some, what is really limiting population growth and how population growth is regulated? So there are four major items. One is called density dependent factors. Uh, could be diseases, intraspecific competition, a same species in population increase, or toxic wastes increase. These are all examples of density dependent factors. Okay, so there's competition or some other things. So you can see here density dependent regulation of uh, population growth. Um, you can see is limiting the population growth. Um, again, a limited source could be other things. Density, this is density dependent factors, but there are also density independent factors, which is not directly related to density. There are other things including, so density in independent factors are like abiotic factors, okay? 
So it could be seasonal changes, weather, environmental disturbances like fire, floods, and storms. You can see here, um, we see exponential growth and sudden decline. Uh, so it happened here in a specific month, which is a density independent. So you can put it in your notes. So a lot of the abiotic factors, abiotic, okay. Um, so weather, seasonal changes, fires, these are some examples. Um, so number three, regulation of uh, population growth limiting factor is population cycles. Populations can rise and fall. They're also called booms and busts. Uh, so boom is, you can see, the rising and busts are, they are falling back. Okay, so these are called population cycles. That also limits the population growth. Um, and there are other items like invasive species that can actually affect if they are like they are non-native species and uh, they can actually and they can actually affect population growth. And um, so the conservation of and then endangered species. U.S. Endangered Species Act defines endangered species as one that is the, in the danger of extinction throughout all of a significant portion of its range. Um, the next level is threatened species, one that is likely to become endangered in the near future. Okay, so the challenge for converse con conservation is, is conservation biology is determine circumstances that threaten a species with extinction and try to remedy the situation. So here are some examples. So extinct is the, the most extreme level, extinct in wild, critically endangered, endangered, vulnerable, near threatened, least concerned, and, and these are some levels of, here are some pictures of extinct animals like dinosaurs and these mammals, that, mammals that are actually some of these examples. Yeah. So biologists um, continuously work on to try to conserve conservation of endangered species. And some of them come back, like you see here is red crocodile woodpecker that actually um, it was con once considered an uh, endangered species. Um, there are other things that involve, one is called sustainable resource management. Um, and the other one is called uh, well, if there is more invasive species here. Zebra mussels is a good example of invasive species, which is the invasive mollusks attached to rocks from a Texas lake in this case. Invasive means non-native, okay? So there is, a, there is a number four factor, which is called biological control of pests. So biology, what is biological control? Biological control is intentional relays of a natural enemy to the attack a attack a pest population which you use to control insects and weeds that reduce yield this is as opposed to a chemical maybe or some other controls okay so relays of a natural enemy to attack a pest population that's biological control and um but they can themselves can be become invasive that's actually one danger of this type of biological control IPM is another technique which is integrated pest management. IPM is a combo biological and chemical and cultural methods. So no overuse of pesticides, but some pesticides is used in IPM. Um, so one pesticide here is a talk, the book talks about is DDT in 1940s, uh, but today DDT is actually is banned and cannot be used. So there is some more examples here. So human population growth. So in few seconds, 30 babies born in the world, 13 people will die. The imbalance between births and deaths cause population growth or decline, possibly. So human population, you can see here, expected to continue currently above 8, um, it's about 8 billion, and then it, it's estimated to reach 10 billion by 2050. So, uh, 
and we can actually calculate birth rates for 1,000 people, death rates and growth rates. We can see here world growth rate is 1.1%, more developed countries is 1.06%, less developed countries are 1.3%. And we can make this age structure curves like you see here and the study population structure. Um, and our ecological footprint, I think we covered this in the last chapter. Human population is reaching again almost 10 billion by 2050. Um, that's increased the uh, increased the footprint of ecological footprint, carbon versus ecological footprint. We, and they are directly linked to each other. What is ecological footprint? This is basically estimating land, water, area required to provide resources in individual or national consumes, including food, fuel, housing, and uh, ability to absorb waste in generate it generates. So and biocapacity is Earth's capacity to renew resources and supply side give us a broad view of sustainability of human activities. So this shows some countries of their um, ecological footprint. We can see uh, from large to smaller and um, it's like listed here. So, and that to recap, just to recap, this chapter, this is chapter 19, and this is population ecology. Previous chapter was 20, was just regular ecology. This chapter specifically focuses on populations, population growth models, population ecology, conservation, endangered species, sustainable resource management, biological control, invasive species, and IPM integrated pest management, as well as human population growth and age structures. So there is actually um, in your PowerPoints, uh, you can see there is a, a summary of this whole chapter 19. So thanks for watching and please feel free to comment and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Happy studying.